Okay, grade 11s, welcome to Algebraic Expressions, week 2 of Mathematics. In this section, we're going to be looking at factorizing, and again in this lesson, we're going to provide what you should know from grade 9. So let's start with watching this little video on common factors. Factor out the greatest common factor, and the expression that gives us 4x to the 4th y plus 8x to the 3rd y. And when they say to factor out the greatest common factor, they're essentially telling us, find the greatest common factor of 4x to the 4th and 8x to the 3rd y, and factor it out of this expression, or kind of undistributed. And to find that greatest common factor, and I always put it in quotes when we speak in kind of algebraic terms, because we don't really know what x and y are, whether they're positive and negative, or whether they're greater than or less than 1. So it's not always going to be the greatest greatest absolute number, but it's kind of the greatest, and it contains the most terms of these two expressions, these two monomials. So if we were to essentially factor out 4x four, four to the fourth y, it would look like this. We, we do the prime factorization of 4, which is just 2 times 2, 2 times 2, times x to the fourth, which is x times x times x times x times y times y. We've just kind of expanded it out as a product of its basic constituents. Now let's do the same thing for 8, 8, I'll color code it, 8 x to the third. Let me do it in, let me do it in similar colors. So we have, in this situation, we have 8 x to the third, x to the third y. So the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. It's 2 times 2 times 2. Prime, or I shouldn't say the, the factorization of x to the third, or the expansion of it, is just times x times x times x, x multiplied by itself three times. And then we are multiplying everything by a y here, times y. So what factors are common to both of these? And we want to include as many of them as possible to find this greatest common factor. So we have two twos here, three twos here. So we only have two twos in common, two twos in common in both of them. We have four x's here, only three x's here. So we only have three x's in common, three x's and three x's. And we have a y here and a y here, so y is common to both, to both expressions. So the greatest common factor here is going to be 2 times 2, so it's going to be 2 times 2 times x times x times x times y, or 4x to the third, 4x to the third y. So this is what we want to factor out. So that means we can write this as, we can write this thing right as, if we factor out a 4x to the third, 4x to the third y, we essentially have to divide each of these by 4x to the third when we're factoring it out. So let me rewrite this. So this is 4x to the fourth y plus 8x to the third y. And we're going to divide each of these by 4x to the third y, 4x to the third y. And hopefully this makes sense to you. If we were to multiply this out, we would distribute this 4x to the third y on each terms, and then it would cancel with the denominator. You'd have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, same thing in the numerator and the denominator, and then you would get this expression over here. So hopefully this makes sense that these are the exact same expression. But when you write it this way, then it becomes pretty clear that this is 4x to the third y, and then you just simplify each of these expressions. 4 cancels with 4. x to the fourth divided by x to the third is x y divided by y is just 1. So you have x plus 8 divided by 4 is 2. x to the third divided by x to the third is 1. y divided by y is 1. So x plus 2. Another way to kind of see what's left over when you factor it out is if you were to take out the common factor. So we took out this and this. What was left over in 4x to the fourth y when we took this stuff out, when we kind of undistributed it? Well, the only thing that was left was this x right over here. Let me do that in another color. The only thing that was left was this x. So that's why we just have that x over there. When we factored everything out of the 8x to the third, out of the 8x to the third y, we factored all this other stuff out. We factored out 4x to the third y. We factored it out, so all we had left was all we had left was the 2. Now, in general, you don't always have to kind of go through this process. You could have done it this way, but this kind of really hopefully makes it clear exactly what we're doing. You could have said, look, 4x to the fourth y plus 8x to the third y. You could have said, well, let's see. The largest number that's divisible into both 4 and 8 
is 4. So let's factor out a 4 out here. The largest multiple of x is divisible into x to the fourth and x to the third. Well, it's going to be x to the third. You put an x to the third out here. And you say, well, the largest thing that's divisible both into y and y is just y. So you could have done it a little bit faster in your head. So you factor out a 4x to the third, and you say, OK, if I take out a 4 out of here, then this becomes a 1. If I take an x to the third out of x to the fourth, I'll just have an x left over. And then if I take a y out of the y, then I just have a 1 there. So this term becomes x. And then if I take a 4x to the third y out of here, if I take a 4 out of an 8, I just have a 2 left over. Take an x to the third out of x to the third, that's just 1. If I take y out of a y, that's just 1. So I'm just left with x plus 2. Eventually, you'll just kind of just do this in your head a little bit faster. But hopefully, this makes everything clear. Right, so I think that was an excellent video to show us how to do this. Um, as you saw, he was taking out the, he was expanding them. Um, we're not going to be doing that because that's kind of like grade 8 and grade 9 work. We're going to be doing that last little method that he used, which was um, basically to just look at what can go into each of these. So let's start off with this. We've got 2a squared minus 18a. Um, what, it can, what is the largest factor that can go both into 2 and 18 is obviously 2. And what is the largest um, that can go into a squared and a is obviously a. So what are we left with? So 2a squared divided by 2a, the 2's cancel, and you're just left with a, minus 2 goes into 18 nine times, and the a's already been taken out. So that's the answer to that. And that's basically what he's been doing here. Very basic common factors. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's look at factorizing a polynomial. So... We're told to factor 4x to the fourth y minus 8x third y minus 2x squared. So to factor this, we need to figure out what the greatest common factor of each of these terms are. So let me rewrite it. So we have 4x to the fourth y, and we have minus 8x to the third y, and then we have minus 2 x squared. So in the other videos, we looked at it in terms of breaking it down to its simplest parts. But I think we have enough practice now to be able to do a little bit more of it in our head. So what is the largest number that divides into all of these? When I say number, I'm actually talking about the actual, I guess, coefficients. We have a 4, an 8, a 2. We don't have to worry about the negative signs just yet. And we say, well, the largest, of, the, the largest common factor of 2, 8, and 4 is 2. That's, 2 goes into all of them, and obviously that's the largest number that can go into 2. So that is the largest number that, that's, that's going to be part of the greatest common factor. So let's write that down. So it's going to be 2. And then what's the greatest, I guess, factor, what, what's the greatest degree of x that's divisible into all three of these? Well, x squared goes into all three of these, and obviously that's the greatest degree of x that can be divided into this last term. So x squared is going to be the great is going to be the greatest the greatest common x degree in all of them. 2x squared. And then what's the largest degree of y that's divisible into all of them? Well these two guys are divisible by y, but this guy isn't. So there is no degree of y that's divisible into all of them. So the lar the greatest common factor of all three of these guys right here is 2x squared. So what we can do now is we can think about each of these terms as the product of 2x squared and something else. And to figure out something else, we can literally undistribute the 2x squared and say this is the same thing. Or even before we undistribute the 2x squared, we can say, look, 4x to the fourth y is the same thing as 2x squared times 4x to the fourth y over 2x squared. Right? If you just multiply this out, you'd get 4xy. Similarly, you could say that you could say that 8x to the third y, I'll put the negative out front. You could say that 8x to the third y is the same thing as 2x squared, our greatest common factor, times 8x to the third y over 2x squared. And then finally, 2x squared is the same thing as if we factor out 2x squared. So we have that negative sign out front. We have this negative sign, 2 x squared. If we factor out 2x squared, same thing as 2x squared times 2x squared over 2x squared. This is almost silly what I'm doing here, but I'm just showing you that I'm, I'm just multiplying and dividing both of these terms by 2x squared. Multiplying and dividing, multiplying and dividing. Here it's trivially simple. This just simplifies to 2x squared right there, or this 2x squared times 1. That simplifies to 1. Or maybe I should write it below. That simplifies to 1, but what do these simplify to? 
So this first term over here, this simplifies to 2x squared times, now you get 4 divided by 2 is 2, x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared, and then y divided by well, you can, 1 is just going to be a y. So it's 2x squared times 2x squared y, and then you have minus 2x squared times 8 divided by 2 is 4, x to the third divided by x squared is x, and y divided by 1, you can imagine, is just y. And then finally, of course, you have minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared times this right here simplifies to 1, times 1. Now, if you were to undistribute 2x squared, if you were to, if you were to undistribute 2x squared out of the expression, out of the expression, you'd essentially get 2x squared times this term minus this term minus this term, right? If you distribute this out, if you take that out of each of the terms, you're going to get 2x squared times this 2x squared y minus minus 4xy minus 4xy, and then you have minus 1, minus 1, and we're done. We're factored the problem. Now, it looks like we did a lot of steps. And the reason why I kind of went through great pains to show you exactly what we're doing is so you know exactly what we're doing. In the future, you might be able to do this a little bit quicker. You might be able to do many of the steps in your head. You might say, OK, let me look at each of these. Well, the biggest coefficient that, fit, that divides all of these is a 2. So let me put that 2, let me factor a 2 out. Well, all of these are divisible by x squared. That's the largest degree of x. Let me factor an x squared out. And this guy doesn't have a y, so I can't factor a y out. So say it's going to be 2x squared times. And what's this guy divided by 2x squared? Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. y divided by 1. There is no other y degree that we factored out, so it's just going to be a y. And then you have minus 8 divided by 2 is 4. x to the third divided by x squared is x. And then you have a y divided by, say, 1 is just y. And then you have minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x squared is 1. So 2x squared divided by 2x squared is just a 1. So in the future, you'll do it more like this, where you kind of just factor it out in your head. But I really want you to understand what we did here. There is no magic. And to realize that there's no magic, you could just use the distributive property to multiply this out again. To multiply it out again, you're going to see that you get exactly this. Right, so you can see that factorizing polynomials is almost identical to factorizing your um, binomial, and we're again going to look at it, and we're going to just do it like you did the last bit, because we've done this before. You've done it in grade 9, you've done it in grade 11, I mean grade 8, so now we're going to just practice. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do baby steps. We're going to see what is the biggest common factor that can go into 40, 82, and 36. 40, and I, let's start with 2. Maybe there's something bigger, we don't know. So 2. And what is the biggest indice for A that can go into all of these? It's A, A squared, and A cubed. So obviously, it's going to be A. And there's no P here. So unfortunately, we can't take out the Ps. So what are we left with? Well, 2 goes into 40, and it's left with 20. And then the A's cancel, and you're left with 20P squared. Plus 2 goes into 82 and leaves you with 41 which is a prime number, so I don't think, is it a prime number? Yes, it is. So I don't think that's actually going to help us at all. But anyway, a goes into a squared, leaves you with an a, p, plus 2 goes into 36, and that is 18, and what are we left with? a squared. And that's it. There is nothing we can do because of that odd number there. There is nothing that goes into 20, 41, and 18. Right, thank you very much, grade 10s. I hope you now have learned how to factorize with polynomials. I'm sure you have, because this is actually original grade 9 work. But practice, practice, practice is the only way you get to be really good at this stuff. Have a wonderful day.